Hi and welcome to another video. Hope you're looking forward to Christmas. So this is my radio today. I've taken off a capacitor that runs to the braid of the headphone socket and run some coax directly to that point. So my aerial is now this coax and the braid is going to earth to ground. But here's my aerial, bit of a mess. I've got an ethernet cable instead of a Wi-Fi dongle. But my aerial is here and I had a solid piece of wire so I could stand it up on the desk and compare that to a dipole type aerial. So in case you're not familiar, so if you've got a regular radio with a telescopic aerial, it's just one element. So this would be one element. This ground that does make a difference, I've actually got it dropped. So I'm guessing radio two up here in South Yorkshire is maybe vertically polarised, not horizontally polarised because if I lift this wire, which is difficult to see, if I lift it up straight the signal strength drops. Let it drop, the signal strength increases. So that's a dipole aerial. I'll go into the calculations in a few minutes. So that's the aerial. Well, so here's my screen, very similar to the other day. I've now got error checking on the radio station name, and now you can see who I'm actually listening to. I'm decoding the slow text. I'll show you on the screen, show you the two registers. But essentially, you've got, you've got eight blocks of characters being displayed, and then the text is updated. You can see it makes up the DJ name or whatever they're broadcasting. In this case, it's Steve Wright in the afternoon, and because it's radio, you get dropouts. So Steve Wright in the afternoon. I've got the speaker turned off, so he must be talking. There's no artist or song name here. Steve Wright in the afternoon. Oh, nearly got the complete text then. But notice the signal strength on so radio one, up at 42, does go up to 43. And the orientation of the aerial is very important. If I turn the speaker on for a second, here you can see he's talking, otherwise we would have an artist name here. So all of this information, there's lots of code, like for example this Radio 2, it gets the station name and then doesn't look at those registers anymore. Same with the pop music, the PTY information, gets that information, then stops looking, otherwise you haven't got enough time to display this. So have a look at the code. I do error check this. It's got to be the same five times. Same with the PTY information. These are the groups being transmitted. So zero is the station name. Now I took a guess. 32 is actually this scrolling text. 16 I had a mess about last night. 16 seems to be the time and day. But I like Steve Wright and since we've got this title I thought it would be interesting to show you. Well, the news is finished and he's now playing. So it says now playing, that's meant to say, a cuddly toy by Roach Food. It's typical, every time I turn the camera on, loads of characters get dropped. Hopefully this gives you a general idea of the scrolling text. So now playing Cuddly Toy by Roach Fudd. I didn't know this song was called Cuddly Toy. And then that's obviously his name's going to come up, Steve Wright, in the afternoon. So we missed that one block of information. Ah, oh, there we go. Aha. Uh -huh. So they put in the spaces. That's not me. A uh, new song's come on. Now playing Black M something by Black M. Some characters missing. A oh, Black Magic by Ah oh, Little. That's obviously Little Mix. There we go, Little Mix. 
Fortunately, the text I chose to use for the radio station I'm using down here. It's my own routine, so you don't have to blank what was there already. It blanks itself. Have a look at the C file if you haven't already got it. But yeah, this one's updated, so I'll put a new link to this new C file, which includes this scrolling text and error checking for the PTY and radio station. So now playing Black Magic by Little Mix. Got a complete title then. I just moved the aerial, that bit that drops down, I straightened it. It went from 41 to 43, 44, so the aerial makes a big difference. So before I forget, here's how you work out your aerial length. So to find the wavelength of the frequency we're listening to, it's a speed of light, nearly 300 million meters a second, divided by 100 megahertz. That gives you the wavelength. So 299,792,458 divided by 100 million equals 2.997 meters. That's the wavelength of FM radio up at 100 megahertz. To make a half wave dipole, which is what you saw hanging on a wall, we want half of the wavelength. So half of three meters is one and a half meters. So you saw hanging on the wall, I had my coax coming up from the radio. I had a 75 centimeter bit of wire pointing one direction. And on the braid, I had a 75 centimeter pointing in the other direction. And depending on what station you listen to, Sometimes this needs to be horizontal, other times it needs to be vertical. You can see the total length of my aerial, including the ground, is 1.5 metres, which is half the wavelength. 75 centimetres there for the core, 75 for the ground. You saw my centre core was actually a thicker piece of copper wire, it's enamelled copper wire. I put it on the desk, just one element, and had it pointing vertically, and it didn't work very well. I had to lay it down. Then I found, if I laid it down left to right, it wasn't as good as if I laid it down pointing away from me or pointing behind me. So you've got to take that into account. I had a look on eBay. And there's a few people selling these telescopic aerials. I mean, to make it ideal, this wants to be a quarter of the wavelength, so 75 centimetres. Take two of those, put it in a box, have one as your centre core pointing one direction, and the ground pointing the other. Right, so first of all, when I speak about the blocks of data, I'm referring to these last four registers in the chip, 15, 14, 13, and 12. You'll see it in the code. We don't use 12, or I don't anyway. Here's a picture you may have seen the other day, if you've been following me. So we've got four blocks of data, 16 bits each, block A, block B, block C, and block D. Block B is where you do half the decoding, for example, the station name, as I described the other day, when this group type code here shows a zero, that means the last block is transmitting the station name. And then you look at this last part of this second block to establish which bit of the station name you are receiving. So the last block is two bytes of data, and I've got an example down here and an answer to a glitch I had the other day as well. So when that second group here sends a zero, for example, on capsule radio, those first, these two bytes on here, only these last two bytes, these last, so byte two and byte three will be a CA for capsule radio. When this shows one, that will show a PI for capital, then a TA. But then, as I described the other day, I wasn't getting a three. I had naught, one, two, and three. Hopefully you're familiar with binary. Naught, one, one, two, one, and two equals three. I wasn't getting a three, but I was getting a one, 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 which is a one, a two, and a four, which equals seven. I was getting the L and a space for capital on number seven, no number three. What I've later found out is this third bit to the left is a DI bit. Now sometimes on some stations you get the DI bit is transmitted 
and specifically this chip, I don't get a number 3, I only get a number 7. Well, number 7 is the same as a number 3. When the DI bit is transmitted, so for example, this data naught zero zero, that becomes a 4. So one, no 1s, no 2s, and we've got a 4. So that's a DI bit. So that's 4, 5, 6, 7. All the BBC stations, including Radio 1, use this DI bit. But half, most of the others, don't have a 4, 5 and a 6. They have a 0, 1, 2 and a 7. I'm not sure if it's down to the chip. Is it a fake because a whole board costs £5, including shipping? Or is it a glitch within the chip? I don't know. But decoding the capital, as you saw the other day, I took the C-A-P-I-T-A -A, and then the L was down at number 7, which meant the D-I bit was turned on. Well, 7 is the same as 3, 4 is the same as 1, 5 is the same as 2, 6 is the same as 3. So for BBC Radio, I was receiving a C and an R, and then the number 2 down here somewhere, and I established BB was coming here at number 4, so BB, C, R, and a 2 was BBC Radio 2. What have we got there? BBC Radio 2. And also the Radio 1, R, A, was here for R, A for Radio. But then the rest was up here, and then the number, number 1 for Radio 1. I thought I'd clear that up, even though you're probably totally confused. It's very messy, and I really do not know why I don't get a number three here. I'm just seeing the scrolling text on my screen. It says Tony Blackburn. Didn't know he was still going. Used to listen to him on the radio in the 80s. So group zero is the station name. I established group 16 seems to be the day and time. Group 32 is a scrolling text. And quite simply, when you get the scrolling text, you take these two bytes here. So byte 0, byte 1, then byte 2 and byte 3. So when it says 0, you look at all four bytes and print them out. When it says 1, you take the next four bytes, print them out. So it'll be byte 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's what I displayed today. That's the scrolling text and that's their locations. And I believe, at least today, it's when my group here showed group 32. But I'm actually really pleased the scrolling text works really well when I've got a strong signal. This lot, I could have done it in a for loop, but yeah, why bother? These are the eight blocks of four data showing the scrolling text, and it's in a while one. This last bit down here, when the character names are set, they've been verified five times, I display the station name and it only does it the once. If my PTY shows religion, light classical or serious classical, it sets the counter to one and changes station immediately, only if I've got it on seek. Today I didn't have it on seek. This is a simple scrolling text. I've got these four characters, and four numbers in there, which are the group type positions, simple as that. Radio buffer, high byte 14, low byte 14, high byte 15, and low byte 15. Those are the four registers, four character arrays, and simply display them down there. I thought I'd look at my previous video and see how strong that Radio 2 was. This signal strength was just with the headphone braid plugged into the radio. But now I've got the dipole, it's come up to 43, 44. So it's, the strength has improved a lot. So hopefully this has given you some insight into making your own FM aerial and hopefully given you some more ideas on the programming and getting the scrolling text working on your portable radio. Thanks for watching.